Well, today we're on a body of water that I really enjoy. It's the Mississippi River, but I'm with my good buddy, Bill Shimoda, and honestly, probably the first time I'd ever fished the Mississippi was probably out of your boat. I think so. That was a lot of years ago, <laughs> it seems like, but uh, they go by quick, but man, no, I, I'm excited that alone, just sharing the boat with you again, bud, and uh, just excited to go fishing. The water's really dropping now. The water temperature is just shooting up. It's been hot. And there's no doubt them fish are going to start setting up on these wing dams. So looking forward to chucking a few crankbaits out. You think casting some cranks? Yeah, I think that'd be a good place to start. Well, I hope you join Bill and I today as we go down the Mississippi River and show you the next bite. When fishing the Mississippi River, a term that you will always hear is wing dam. A wing dam is a man-made structure used to control current. They're mostly used to prevent shoreline erosion, but can also be used just to move current to the main river channel. Oftentimes you see these wing dams in a series of four or five. Not only do they move current, but the current also carries bait that ends up concentrating in certain areas on the wing dams. And the walleyes sit and wait in those areas instead of having to fight the current for a meal. Wing dams are nearly exclusive to the Mississippi River, but bridge pylons and rocks can have a similar effect when it comes to current and bait fish. Feels like a nice one though. That's what we want to hear. Just want to stay right back there, Bill? Or sure, back yep. You ready? <laughs> I am. Oh yeah, that'll <laughs> there work. There we go. Oh, off Ooh, the fell net. Off. All right. <laughs> nice, hey, that'll Welcome work. Back. <laughs> That's a nice, nice one. Healthy uh. fish. Oh, that one was off in the net. <laughs> I mean, this nice, healthy fish here, Mississippi River, what is that, 20 inch here? Yeah, Maybe yeah one, about one 20 inches, over. about three pounds, I and mean, that's a pretty typical fish you'll catch. You obviously catch a lot bigger ones, but I mean, what a fun fish to catch on a spinning rod any day, anywhere. I know, there was no question whether or not it was a rock or a bite there, <laughs> but uh, let's get this one back here, get yeah, another one. Let's see if we can do better, man. Good let's start. do it. So this is really one of my favorite things to do. It's early summer, uh, temperatures are getting really warm right now. And a lot of the lakes in this region are kind of getting tough. The weeds are growing and you know they're kind of slipping into those dog days, but that really doesn't happen here on the Mississippi River for a couple more months. I tell you what, we've had a lot of really high water this spring. Uh, a lot of them fish have been pushed back up into the backwaters and they usually will stay there a lot of times until that water drops, which it is doing now. And a lot of times, or I should say all the time, they're gonna end up out here on these wing dams. And that's what we're looking for today. We're looking for the wing dams that have the most fish on them. We're just kind of bouncing around. Some are good, some are bad, but, uh, and they always change. You know, just because you caught a fish on that wing dam last year doesn't mean it's gonna produce year after year after year. So we're just poking around, making a few casts on each one. And usually when you get one fish, you're gonna get multiple fish. Those walleyes really love setting up on them dams. They have kind of everything you need. They're, there's current and there's usually always bait. A you know, great place to look for walleye. If you're fishing the Mississippi River in the summer, you better be looking on the wing dams. The next bite is brought to you by Mercury Marine, Go Boldly, Schaefer's Specialized Lubricant, Putting Equipment First, Nitro Boats, Performance Fishing Boats, Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's, Your Adventure Starts Here, Berkeley, Your Fish, Our Science, and Power Pole, Total Boat Control. Closed captioning for the next bite is provided by Precision Trolling Data, the authority for crankbait diving depth information. Relatively speaking, the fish holding zone on a wing dam is very small. So getting your bait into the zone and fishing it clean is extremely important so you're able to capitalize on every cast. 
The current makes this zone even more difficult to hit by pushing your bait downriver faster. So when it comes to casting crankbaits on a river system, one of the baits that I really believe it has really shined and is kind of made um, for this situation and has kind of been our go-to uh, here today is this money badger. And to me, you know, one of the biggest attributes of the money badger is the weight transfer that's inside that. And this has a tungsten ball that shifts from the forward to back as you cast. A lot of times you see this in jerk baits, but having that tungsten ball in there really helps this bait cast like a dart. But more importantly, this flash disc right here really helps with balance. And when you're fishing in a river system, you know, we have a mile and a half, two mile an hour current here today, and now we're reeling our bait into that current. You're talking a bait that's having the track at three plus four miles an hour in some situations. You know, having a bait that can stay running true and stay tuned, especially when it's deflecting off the bottom, and obviously that deflection creates bites. Um, and so it's one of those things that to me, this bait is really built for it. And it has a lot more subtle sound. It has more of that one knock sound um, compared to that super high pitched digger. So once again, it gives us other options. And just like any crankbait fishing, having options of actions and sounds can be really important uh, on a day on the water by just trying to let the fish tell you what they prefer. So this is one of my favorite baits right now. It's really a shine for us here today, um, but it's one of those baits I truly believe is made for river fishing. Bill, right at the boat here, Are right you here, right here. Are kidding me, another one? Yep. Oh my gosh, I can't even get my line tied up. Right by the boat. Oh yeah, another yep, nice one. Stay back one. there, right here. You want me to come up? Oh yeah, right there. There he is, right that's here, a, Bill. That's a good one. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, another nice one, wow, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Nice. Oh. oh yeah, it's a solid fish there, buddy. Need a player? Uh, I might. He's kind of here. You go. A little wrapped up. Hey, that's another <laughs> really nice fish, man. I tell you what, this wind has really picked up in the last I don't know hour or so, and then money badgers are just amazing. How that weight transfer just shoots the back of that bait and then just flings out there like a dart. But. I mean, it makes a big difference in casting and wind is having a bait that can cut that wind well. And so it's just one of those things where it just makes you more efficient and you can power through. And you know, we've had to slide a little bit closer to the wing dam, but still. We yeah, just, it's, it's working out. So let's Heck get her yeah. back, huh? Nice one, buddy. <laughs> All right, nice one. Total Control, presented by PowerPole. 20 years of trust evolved from Total Boat Control. You know, the use of a power pole for the northern anglers just become almost a staple. Add on the drift paddle to it, which for us in the north is such an important tool in a lot of different trolling applications, obviously. You know, if you want to troll crankbaits or crawler harnesses and the waves are big and you're just drifting and, and trolling too fast, you can use that drift paddle to slow you down to achieve the speeds that you really want to. But the other application for the drift pedal that I want to talk about here a little bit is in casting situations. Uh, something where it'll allow you if you're using the drift pedal to slow down in casting situations and cover the water the way you really want to. So I'm casting crankbaits to a rock shoreline right here. And basically you can actually see here, I have the drift paddle down. So I'm just using the wind to drift me down this bank. And basically I have that paddle down to slow me down just a little bit so I can cover it the way I want to. Um, obviously if you got some wind like we have today, you might drift too fast and you might be making about half the amount of casts on this shoreline is what you'd really want to. So not only in trolling applications, but also casting applications. Take use of the drift paddle if you have a power pole. It's a fantastic tool to allow you to fish more methodical and catch more fish than what you would if you're drifting too fast. So a lot of times when you, when you come to fish these wing dams, you maybe haven't ever been to one of them, and you really want to take a little bit of time and just kind of see how they lay out. Uh, oftentimes your map card might have it on there. You'll see a line and they'll have it marked, but and what I've been finding is they're not always exactly right on the money. So what I like to do is just kind of go out towards the end of it, don't get in too shallow where you might hit your engine on it, 
Uh, but just simply idle over it real slow, and then you'll see it like the see now here. It's coming up, coming up. Now you can see we're dropping off the front. You can see the scour hole where a lot of those fish are going to be sitting. Uh, but what's really important now, you can see it on side imaging, plain as day. Now I can see it on both sides. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go as far over to the left as I can. I'm going to put a waypoint there. And then I'm going to go as far over to the right as I can. I'm going to put a waypoint there. And now those will show up right on my map here. And you can see it's not exactly where it was shown on that map card. So what's really important about that now is when I go set up to start casting, now when I spot lock, say I'm not feeling rocks on every cast, well I'm probably not getting back far enough to it, so now I just, if I really want to know where it is, I just take my cursor, scroll back to it, and I can see it's 170 feet away. Well I can't cast that far, so, so I know I just need to slide my boat back, say 30, 50 feet off of it, and uh, you're going to make a lot more cast in the strike zone if you take a little time and know exactly where that wing dam is. Milk. Oh, you got one? Yep. Oh, yep. man. I turn my head for a second, you catch a fish? It's right here. <clears throat> Hold on, I'm coming. <laughs> right here, Bill. <laughs> All right. <laughs> there we go. Nice fish. Boy, yeah. did that one eat it. Look at you can only see the bill. <laughs> <laughs> he ate that one. I felt the old suck at the whole thing right in. <laughs> Better be careful in there, man. Oh, boy. You got to be the players on still? that. Right in the front here, right up front. Oh. There you go. Here, yeah, you hold his mouth open. I'll get in there so we don't hurt this guy. I'm right there. Try not to hurt this guy. There we go. Those Fusion 19 hooks are <laughs> he wasn't coming nasty. <laughs> they finally yeah, got that's a off. nice fish. Look at the colors on this, but honestly, this fish is probably in only a couple feet of water, though. I mean, this is a pretty shallow dam here. It looks nice though, you could just you could see it, it's showing itself nice. I really had a good feeling about that. Actually, I just broke a lure off and I was turning the other way and you're like, I got one! But like, well, come on, a, give me a chance. We also seen those couple right when we pulled in on side image, right up right on the bottom face of that deal there on the wing dam. So it's kinda kinda intriguing from the start. For sure. That's definitely something I always look for. Like if I'm gonna pick a dam, you wanna see life around it. It's hard to see them on the dam because yep. you don't want to drive right over it always, but when there's life around it. It's only a matter of time before they pull up like that one and eat, so. Nice. Awesome, nice Let's fish. Let's get her back. <clears throat> See you. When it comes to the fishing wing dams like we are today, I really want to keep in mind the angles that I'm casting. And, and so what I want to do is cast no more than 90 degrees up current you know 90 to a 45 degree angle down current what this is going to allow me to do is basically sweep my baits across the face in this situation the wing dam and also you know especially in snaggy situations with rock if i'm casting downstream and uh, if i get snagged in any situation for jigs or crankbaits i can always let the current pull the slack in my line or pull my crankbait back up and basically allow me to get my bait back versus if i cast upstream Basically that current is driving my line, driving the bait down into the bottom and I'm going to get snagged a lot easier and not be able to get my baits back a, a lot more efficiently. And so to me, those fish are set up into the current, facing the current for a reason. They're using the river as a conveyor belt for them. So when we're fishing these wing dams, if I cast at a 45 degree angle down the face of this dam, I can stay in that high percentage area right along the face of this wing dam a lot longer versus if I just cast straight downstream. So to me, using the current to my advantage is also going to allow me to fish more efficiently uh, for catching fish, but also for getting my baits back. You got him? Pretty good one. I don't know, I hope he's running at me here, but I think it's a pretty decent one. It's kind of running right at me here, I don't know. All right, here we go. Oh yeah! <laughs> hey, that'll work, huh? Nice. There's a nice one. Heck yeah. Oh. Nice long one. Ooh. I mean, that's one thing about the Mississippi. You can't get down on yourself catching 14, 15 inches because the next, next fish could be a 25 incher. Yeah, we knew we were going to get some good ones at some point today. I, uh, I had to sneak the fire tiger in there. <laughs> I did notice the water was a little dirty, and so I did put the fire tiger back on. But you know, a lot of times like, you've been doing really good on white, and I feel like white, you know, those kind of natural looking colors are good when it's clean. Dirtier water, the fire tigers, and the bright stuff again is going to be good. But yeah, when that first couple head shakes, I was like, oh yeah, it's big, but then it ran right at me. I was like, oh, maybe not. But <laughs> yeah, it's one thing it about here. Down real nice. 
you know, even though it's Mississippi River, you think it's always dirty, but there is cleaner spots. Like, you can see right over there, it's a little bit cleaner, mm -hmm. but it's just, uh, you know, maybe it's the wind or the shallow water coming across, but Probably. let's get in touch. Yeah. Nice, dude. Wouldn't mind doing that a few more times. <laughs> I'll have to get her back. All right. The next bite is brought to you by Mercury Marine. Go boldly. Schaefer's Specialized Lubricant. Putting equipment first. Nitro Boats. Performance Fishing Boats. Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. Your adventure starts here. Berkeley. Your fish, our science. Lowrance. The ultimate fishing system. And Power Pole. Total Boat Control. Hot Topics, leading information in tackle and techniques to make you a better angler. Presented by Mercury. You know, the Nitro ZV series of boats, whether it's the 19, 20, or 21 foot model, are fantastic choices for the northern angler. What are the must-have options that I want to look for when ordering one of these boats? And the first thing I want to cover in the ZV20, the 20 is built a little bit differently, the top cap's a little bit differently, but making sure that you order that track system on the gunnel. These gunnels run from low to high in the boat. Uh, so you're gonna get that spread on those rods when you're trolling that you need by running this track system. Next thing I'm gonna talk about is the steering and the digital throttle. So you're gonna get a Pro XS, a Mercury Pro XS with the ZV20. That's the motor that's available. You're able to add through Nitro the electric hydraulic steering. And I think that's such a huge key in running rough water because it's literally just being able to steer this boat with a fingertip. You don't get fatigued in rough water. When you go to the throttle part of it, you can add the digital throttle, the DTS for that Mercury Pro XS. And there's no cables, everything's electric. You're moving the throttle forward and the boat's moving right away. So just for the user, for the driver, the experience is gonna be better. So you can add that steering and the throttle into your ZV20 package. So between those two options, uh, really, there's so many good standard options on this boat that when you add things like that, you're just gonna even increase that fishing machine to be more of a beast. Structure in a river system creates current breaks or eddies that bring bait to fish. These areas congregate the fish, making them easier to target because they're slightly more predictable especially on the Mississippi River, with tons of man-made structures. So when it comes to casting crankbaits out here on the Mississippi River, like anywhere casting a crankbait, to me, for it to be efficient, I need to be able to cast it far, because let's face it, especially when it comes down to deep diving crankbaits, I need to cast it far enough that it can achieve the greatest depth that it can on a cast, especially in these deep water situations like in the current that we're dealing with here on the Mississippi River. So the rod that I like to use is one of the longest rods that I'll ever use. This is a seven foot six medium. Now having that long rod is gonna help me be able to cast further easier with less effort. And not only having that long rod for casting, but it's also gonna be a lot more forgiving. It has a lot more cushion. So when these fish hit in that current, they can very easily go the other way with a couple mile an hour of current on top of them. So having a rod that can also forgive some of that stress of the initial hook set is really important. You know, sliding down to the reel, I always like to have a larger arbor size. This is a size 30 Abu Garcia. That larger arbor size, once again, helps me cast further. Um, when it comes down to the line, I'm a 10 pound fire line uh, for my main line. I want a no stretch line, so that way I can feel the rocks. Not only can I feel the rocks, that thinner diameter cuts through the current a lot better, but one thing I do a little bit different, they might sound crazy, is I actually use a fluorocarbon leader. Now this is just a short, maybe foot and a half, uh, 20 pound fluorocarbon. And to me, fluorocarbon does a lot better job at abrasion resistance where it's built for the setup here on the Mississippi River. Right here. Again, Bill, right by the boat. Same thing, right next to the <laughs> Another boat. Another one? Oh, nice. You're, you got him? Yep, right oh here, my right gosh. here. Another big Feel? one. <laughs> Feel? Ready, Bill? Yep. Oh, got him, <laughs> baby. Yeah. <laughs> nice, dude. All right. Oh, yeah. That's a really good one, man. 
Oh, uh, I mean, I, I think I'm close enough to the wing dam, but at the, at the same time, like, we can definitely cast there, but it's making it a little frustrating for netting because they're literally hitting <laughs> at the boat. Or we should say you can cast there. I haven't been able to make a cast in a while because you keep catching them. This is awesome. I mean, so you it's can, all about. It looks like we're, like, 15 feet from the wing dam, but I'm literally casting like parallel to it. And so. Oh, look at this oh, guy. He's got a little lamprey on. He's got a little character to him there. Buddy, yeah. But yeah, I mean, that's just so awesome. They are coming like right in front of the dam. It's like rock, 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 Austin. As soon as you free up from those rocks, it just explosion. <laughs> you know, yeah. and your rod blows slack in your line. So. They're finally starting to bite. We had a little uh, lull there, but I'd say they're definitely starting to bite again. So. Yeah, it's definitely find a little pack of them. Seems like you can get a few bites, but. Let's get yeah. this one back. I think she's ready. Nice fish. See you later. Oh, just picking up Shimoda's trash, apparently. <laughs> He's trying to slow me down from the fish catching. What's Here's that, your bait, bait bill if you want to retie so I can catch another one. Yeah. <laughs> Fruit of a loom? Yeah. Is needed to keep pushing that water in towards the middle of the, in the middle of the channel. I want to start over. It was all right for a second, but Whatever. cut. So what a actually builds right here on the Mississippi River over time. <clears throat> oh, man, what a choke! <clears throat> you just should just sit down, take a break. It was it was okay. Yeah. Lengthwise, about right. That's kind of what uh, what we found today, and, and I can't wait to get back out there. Okay, I gotta do it again. It was good to the end, maybe, kinda. <laughs> hey, I got uh, him, yeah. buddy. Fish sticks. Hmm. Yeah. Brave little soul. And what was he planning on doing with that when he got it in his mouth? Suck on it like a cough drop for a while. <laughs> <laughs> 